All right, so it's 11 o'clock at night, and we went somewhere today. We went to the Ann Arbor Hands -on Museum, and I took a bunch of pictures of the kids, and I was going to do a video on kind of just family time with the kids and walking around the museum and getting pictures of them doing stuff, and it was just so loud, so I couldn't record anything of that. Um, so instead, today's photo walk is gonna be a walk through my time in the military as a photographer. And I'm going to highlight some of the photos and talk about either what was happening or how I got the photo or something along that line. Um, so we'll see how this video turns out, but that's, that's the idea for today's video. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with just the army and kind of go through how I got into being a photographer for the army um, as part of the story. So I joined the army in 2013 the U.S. Army as a infantryman, at 11 Bravo, and then was lucky enough to get stationed in Hawaii, where I was assigned to Comanche Troop 34 Cav, which was a dismounted reconnaissance team unit, and all we did was walk around the woods, train, walk around the woods. We did lots of with helicopters, um, but mostly just reconnaissance stuff. So I'm going to show some pictures of that and how that transitioned into being public affairs for the army, which is where I did the photography stuff. And then we'll get into some of the pictures after. Um, so what you're seeing now is some pictures of me just kind of in the field life of being an infantryman at the time. And I always had my camera with me when I was doing this stuff and I would take video or photos of us doing what we were doing. And at one point I distinctly remember sitting in a field and I was back to back with one of my NCOs and I was like, what are we doing, man? Why are we here? It's raining sideways. We were four or five days into the mission and just miserable. Lo loved what we were doing, but miserable conditions. And I remember a NCO came out of the woods. Uh, they had a camera and they were taking our picture and I was like, hey, what do you do? And they were like, oh, I'm broadcast. And I was like, well, how do I do that? <laughs> so I got with them after and I started submitting products as an infantryman still um, to them because they were broadcast, they were doing video, a lot of GoPro stuff, um, our helo casts and, and missions like that. And then that quickly transitioned to, okay, how do I get your job? So I went through the process and I eventually got to the point where I was in the brigade doing on the job training. And then that while I was waiting for my school date, and then I got the school date and then I was officially to school to be a PAO. So when I was going out to the field, still as an infantryman during that transition period, I was going out with my camera to do the same mission set. But once I became a PAO, my, my mission was the storytelling aspect. So photo, video, journalism, working with media, things like that, which was honestly the best job the Army has to offer. And it's a complete secret for some reason, and I, but I love it. Um, so I've, I've got to do a lot of content creation because enlisted, that's kind of the main skill set. Lower enlisted is content creation and got to go a lot of cool places because of that um, and do a lot of really cool stuff that I would have never had the opportunity to do. So now we're gonna get into kind of showing some of the pictures and then I'll talk about some of the pictures as I go. So this first shot is on Fort Campbell and it is the Wildland Firefighters doing a controlled burn. And this was a story that I was doing. It was actually part of a series called the Year Environment Series. And this shot was just one of the days I met them out on a controlled burn and kind of followed them around as they did their drip torches and was lucky enough to get this, this high contrast style shot. Um, for me, the shot really sets off because he's looking off and, and the he looks away into the frame, which is nice, but then the, the just everything kind of in this photo works. Um, if I were to do it again, I may frame it differently to get the truck on, on the side out of the image and maybe the road is in general, but I think for what it is, it's a, it's, it's a really solid image, and it's one of my favorite shots I've gotten in the military. This next image 
took me almost a week to get. Um, they were shooting this R Ram at two in the morning, I think. It was super early, but essentially they were they were doing um, anti air anti drone or whatever. And for the first couple of days, there was misfires. So we would go out there, set up, wait, and they would call it or it'd be misfire or whatever. So it took it took a long time. I knew this is the shot I wanted to get when I saw because they were shooting tracers. And obviously with tracers and a long exposure, you're going to get the laser beam effect. Um, I love that shot just for because I know what went into it. This shot is really special to me because this was my unit. This was Comanche Troop, and this was a Helocast operation. One of the first things I went back out on when I came over to uh, on-the-job training was I went over to, to my unit and went out to the field with them, except this time not to train, but to do the storytelling. Um, for me, this photo really works because of the colors, obviously, and, and the, the subject, but the biggest thing I learned with shooting photos of helicopters is the, the blades are, the rotors are spinning, right? The blades are spinning. So you want to see at least a little bit of motion, especially when they're in the air. Um, so this one, you get a little bit of motion on the blades. You get the, the struggle of carrying a Zodiac into a Chinook, um, the mountains in the background. It just, it all really works together for this photo. This, this next shot, this one was probably the first shot I got that would go, that went viral. Um, this was on the big island of Hawaii. They were doing javelin training, and I sat there with a tripod for 30 minutes and watched people shoot them and waited to get the timing right to get the rocket coming out and the flame going out the back. Um, so I was doing burst shots. I was at a fairly wide open aperture. Um, you have to be pretty far away because the because of the, the rocket shooting, you can't get but so close. So... I was probably on a 7200 lens for this, um, again, on a tripod, on the lava rock, sitting there just waiting for this shot, knowing what I wanted to get as this, again, the people are centered, but it's just, everything works. The, the rocket coming out and deploying, it's just this photo. And then still to this day, anytime anything happens with the military and the word javelin gets used, this photo ends up getting recycled back to the top. This one's pretty cool. This was in Japan. Um, again, this was another one I knew. I knew I was looking to get a shot of the mortar in the cloud to, to actually see it coming out. And I remember taking the picture handheld, not on a tripod, um, because I was I was moving around a whole lot this day. And I when I looked in the viewfinder to look at the image, the cloud was all white, so I didn't know I got the mortar in the. Um, in the cloud but when i went back to edit it the first thing i did was slide highlights down way too far down but i slid it all the way down and i saw it and i was like yeah it's there i got the mortar i got the flame and it's a, I mean, again you can tell it's a really still image because the raindrops and everything are kind of frozen in time and this one millisecond of time is completely frozen forever in this image um which i i really really enjoy this image as well this image for me is, isn't great because it's what, what the image looks like, but the story and, and the, the soldiers' faces kind of make this one for me. This was at a Tennessee Titans game um, when I was stationed at Fort Campbell, and they brought us into the tunnel where the players are coming out of. And if you look in the back, uh, you can see players and referees walking out of the tunnel and soldiers taking selfies and soldiers taking pictures of them coming out. And for me, that kind of really captured the moment of the excitement of being a soldier, but you're still a person and, and kind of blurring the line of those two and getting to the person behind the uniform. And all these people here are just big Titans fans and they're just excited to be this close to NFL players like all of us would be. So I think that, that that's the, the colors are cool and the photos, whatever. But for me, the story behind the image is what really makes this one. This picture I actually didn't know was gonna turn out as cool as it did. Um, I flew out with the unit, so I was in the Blackhawk. I made sure that I could be the first one out so I could jump, turn around, and shoot a picture of them leaving. And again, with, with helicopters, you wanna blur the, the rotors, which I really made, was, was a key factor of what I was doing. So I had a 
fast enough shutter speed to be able to get still because you're not on a tripod for these shots you're just you're on the ground i think i threw my bag down to put my camera on the bag actually um but you want to have a slow enough shutter speed to get the rotor blur but also fast enough to not get blur anywhere else um because that the blackhawk is moving right but it, you want the blackhawk to be still so it's a little bit technical um and it was just a, such a bluebird snowy day that everything's overexposed um uh the image on the right side is a little blown out and the snow is blown out, but it's really hard to kind of balance all of that in the moment of jumping out of a Blackhawk, running around soldiers, throwing your bag down, getting on the ground because you can't be standing up when it takes off. And then, in, and then framing the image to not cut off barrels or people or anything. Um, so for me, the image is cool with the Blackhawk in the background. And, and again, it's one of those, it's, it's the in the moment that a lot was going on. So to remember that when I look at this picture is pretty interesting for me. This one's cool. This one is a more of a feature story. Um, this was a guy in Hawaii. He was a soldier, but he was a tattoo artist before the army and then continued to do tattoos. He actually did, I have a tattoo that he did um, for me. And we, we did a piece on him and about how, again, you're blurring that line of soldier and person. And that's kind of where really the, the feature element comes out because soldiers are just people and, and there's a story to every soldier, right? So this guy did tattoos before the army. And then once he joined the army, he continued to do tattoos because that was his passion. So we kind of got to talk about that. Um, and this photo for me, this was his little tattoo studio in his house. And it was just a cool, cool thing. And then again, get the tattoo out of at the end there was really was really a, a whole circle piece for me. Okay, so this one was at Fort Campbell down in Nashville. And I like this image just because the leading lines, because the bass guitar is so big. And his eye, with his eyes closed, you can tell he's kind of really feeling the music. Um, this was in a big recording studio at Nashville, a big professional recording studio, that the 101st band was invited to come out and perform a song and record it professionally. Um, so again, it was just a cool moment in time. Uh, the, image, the image works as a part of a series. I've got a picture of him. I've got a picture of the drummer, the singer, the guitarist. So as a photo story, they work really well together, but individually, this one's probably the strongest image to look at because of just the the angle of, of the whole thing and um, really reading the moment where his eyes are closing and feel he's just kind of vibing with the music. And for this last image, this was another one of those where it kind of wasn't sure what I was gonna get because it was one or two or three in the morning and it was pitch black outside. Um, I'm not using light because I don't wanna be in the way and I don't wanna interfere with what these guys are seeing with their nods. So I'm moving off of muzzle flashes to find where I'm going. And um, I mean, you can see they're wearing nods. So it's literally dark enough that they can't see anything besides what they see with their nods. So I knew where this guy was gonna be because I had seen him run up there. Um, so I set up my tripod, I set up a long exposure shot and I just waited. And because I was in, because I was in the infantry, I feel I have a better idea of what's going on and a better um, idea for what's coming next. So I was able to uh, listen to them talking guns and knew when he was going to shoot next and then just press the shutter on a five or 10 second exposure and got lucky that the gun didn't move too much and that he didn't move a bunch. The guy in the background is kind of blurry, but um, yeah, the muzzle flare really lit up everything perfectly for this shot. So that's all the that's all the photos I picked today to kind of go over. I think I'm gonna do another another one of these, and maybe I'll do more of the civilian side of of some of the best photos I've gotten. Maybe do a video on Antarctica. Uh, maybe this will be a weekly thing. I'll do a, a recap on um, best photos I've gotten or best video. Maybe get into some video stuff. But I think today was just a good excuse to try it out because again, didn't didn't get any actual walk outside um, to where I could record video for it. So we'll see how this goes. We'll see if you guys like it or not. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there.